In this video, I provide an intuitive description of the demand curve. The questions that we pose here are how buyers of so-called normal goods behave when the price of the good changes. And normal in this context means that the demand for the good increases when the income of the consumer increases. For goods for which this is not the case, some odd things can happen in certain circumstances uh, when the price changes. And this would be the so-called uh, given goods, which are a particular form of inferior goods, but I will go into the details in other chapters on that. The second question is what happens if other factors change, for example, the income level. And the third question, whether we can depict this graphically. To get to the intuition, assume we have a certain normal good, for example, going to the cinema. So the demand uh, that we want to analyze is the demand for cinema tickets per month. Now, a person's demand for such tickets would depend, among other things, the preferences of the person and so on, on the person's income level and the price of a ticket. So if the person has a high income, then demand would typically be higher uh, for cinema tickets. And if the price of the ticket is lower, then demand would also be higher. Assume for the moment that uh, the income level of person A is given, and then it's easy to imagine that there can always be a price of the ticket that is so high that this person would not want to go to the cinema at all per month. So assume this is a student with a low income level and the price of a ticket is very high for some reason, then of course the person would typically not want to go to the cinema at all. If the price comes down, however, at some point the demand for cinema visits would become positive and it would increase with a falling price. This is kind of intuitive. If it becomes cheaper, we would demand more for a given income level. And if the price becomes very low and say it's for free for some reason at some point, then demand can become very high, but it's still at some point limited by the available time of the person to go to the cinema. We can now easily illustrate this graphically. So that's the answer to the third question that we had, where we plot the quantity demanded, which is denoted by Q, a lowercase Q for individual demand. Aggregate demand will then be denoted by an uppercase Q and the price P um, on the vertical axis here. Then we can draw the demand curve of person A. As I said, if the price is very high, then the demand of person A for cinema tickets would be zero. Right? And if the price comes down, demand increases, and at a certain uh, point here, when the price is uh, close to zero, then demand would only be limited by the available time basically of the person and it could become very high. So we have a downward sloping demand curve in the space of the price and quantity demanded. So for a decreasing price, quantity demanded would increase. To illustrate what happens for a changing price level, we depict the situation here where we have a price P1, say that's the price of a cinema ticket in a certain uh, city. And Q1 would be the associated demand for person A at this particular price. Now, for some reason, the price of the cinema ticket increases, goes up. Then we have a movement along the curve from a higher demand level Q1 at the old price P1 to the lower demand level Q2 at the higher price P2. So this is a movement along the curve. So if the price changes, we get the movement along the curve. And this stands very much in contrast to what can happen when other things change. So for example, the income level of the person. We have here again the demand function of um, person A. And now assume that income of person A increases. Then we will not have a movement along the curve anymore, but a shift of the curve. So in this case, the curve would shift outwards, which would mean that we get a higher demand for each particular price. The income of the person has increased, so the person would, on average, typically consume more of the good. And that's the definition of the normal good as such. So we can illustrate this here for a price P1. At the old income level, the person would have consumed the quantity Q1, 
and that the new income level the person would consume Q2. So for the given price, the quantity demanded has increased because the person has a higher income and can afford more of this consumption good that the person likes. So to summarize what we've learned here, we can plot demand curves where we have quantity demanded on the horizontal axis and the price along the vertical axis. And the demand curve would then be a downward sloping line in such a diagram. If the price of the good changes, we have a movement along the curve. So if the price increases, we would have a movement towards lower quantity demanded. And if the price decreases, then we have the opposite, a movement along the curve to a higher demand level, so quantity demanded. And if the income of the person changes, we would have a shift of the curve. So if the income level increases, the curve would shift outwards. For any given price, quantity demanded would increase. And if the income level decreases, the opposite would hold true. Two final remarks in this context. We've depicted the demand curve as a linear uh, curve, basically, as a straight line. And this, of course, makes it very easy if you have certain calculations and so on. If everything is linear, then this is typically much easier than if things are nonlinear. But in reality, of course, typically we would have demand curves that are not linear, like this one here, where we would have a situation where for a high price level demand would decrease, but it would perhaps not become zero if the good that um, is depicted here is a necessary good, for example then uh, the price can become potentially very high uh, before we really demand zero of this good. And if the um, price decreases, then demand could increase uh, much more than just in the linear case before. With cinemas, uh, cinema visits, of course, then the available time is a restricting factor, but you can easily think of um, other uh, goods where no such limit uh, exists in this form because it's not that time consuming or so, and then demand could increase further. Of course, at some point, it would still have um, a satiation often. And here would be one uh, demand curve of, uh, that fits to a necessary good like food, where we would have that even for a high price, the quantity demanded would not become zero. So that's a necessary good. But if the price comes down very much, and even if, if food becomes free, then we would still not eat, I don't know, uh, 10,000 calories per day. Instead, at some point, we would have a satiation level. So this would be the demand curve of an individual for a good for which a satiation level exists. Typically, as I said, we will deal with goods like uh, this one or with curves like this one, where at least for a reasonable range of the price, we would have a nonlinear uh, relationship.